In this video, I want to share with you a low content niche that I think is going to make a big comeback. If you don't want to miss out on getting into this niche before everybody else, make sure to watch this video. I'll be sharing how popular these books are and how you can make and publish them for yourself. Hi, I'm Caroline. Welcome to my channel. I share videos every single week all about self-publishing books and you're watching one of them right now. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me here. So what is this big niche that I'm talking about? First of all, let me give you a little backstory of why I think this is going to be a good niche to publish books in. I have a daughter, she's nearly seven and she is just starting getting into reading books. And so we are starting to spend a lot more time in the kids section of bookstores, something or somewhere I have never been before. The kids section, that is, not bookstores. I love going to bookstores. But anyway, I've started noticing over the past few months, and this actually may have been going on a bit longer. I myself have really just started noticing these types of books. Now, these kinds of books have always been a popular niche. They aren't a new style of book, but I feel like they have had a very specific, very smaller, much targeted audience in the past, but they are starting to see a resurgence and are trickling over into the more broader, bigger target audiences. So a recent book that my daughter chose was this one here called Bat Cat. She is obsessed with cats. And this book is a graphic novel or what you might call a comic book. And as you can see, it is just the classic comic book style of book. So after she got this book and she actually chose it through her school's book club, I started noticing these books in bookstores and in just general department stores that have a book section in them. And I was surprised to see that most of the currently trending stuff like books, computer games, TV shows had all released a graphic novel. Let's take a quick look on Amazon at what's going on with these kinds of books. I've gone onto Amazon and just done a search for kids graphic novel. If you pop in kids comic book, you might get different results. I did have a look under comic book and they were very similar. We have all these series of books, Katie the Cat Sitter, Max Meow Cat Crusader. We have Minecraft, which is a massively popular computer game. And there's just this whole range of comic books or graphic novels that sell really well on Amazon. If you've been taking a quick look at the BSRs, the bestseller ranks, which are these numbers underneath each of the books. That gives us an indication of whether a book is selling or not. And there's some really great bestseller ranks in here and some really, really popular books. And the other thing that I noticed with these is seem to be quite common to be set up in a series. So you have whole series of graphic novels, for example, like this one, the Cat Kid Comic Book club influences book five of five. So they've created a series of graphic novels around this character or around this story. And quite a lot of the big, more popular authors and books seem to be doing this. And these types of books aren't just for kids either. They are popular with adults too. So although in the search term on Amazon, I used kids graphic novel and I focused on kids books and kids being the target market. In this video, there is a strong market or a strong demand for adult comic books, adult graphic novels as well. And one other thing I did notice too is that a lot of really popular, really cult type of books, The Hobbit, there's some really popular movies like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, George Orwell's 1984, June, some really popular movies, TV shows and books all go on to create a graphic novel to go with their existing products, whether that be books, movies, TV shows, games. Let's take a look at some of these graphic novels, these comic books a little bit more closely. So I've pulled up the Minecraft one. Minecraft, as I say, is a massively popular computer game. And if we take a look inside at the layout of these books, they're basically just these different shaped squares and rectangles, etc., on a page filled mostly with images with a few words, a few speech bubbles here or there. And it's more about telling the story through the images as opposed to writing. So if somebody's more into drawing than they are writing, they may still be interested in creating a book like this, but they don't want to write. And this is something that might be more suited to somebody who likes to draw. The next one that I want to look at is Dogman, The Scarlet Shedder. Dogman is a massive series. As you can see here, this book specifically has a 30-day revenue of over $300,000 and it's currently 
sitting with a bestseller rank of number six and was just published in March. So fantastic results for a book that's only been published for a month and it is part of a series. So this is the 12th book in this series of graphic novels for this character Dogman. This one you can see is a little bit different to the Minecraft one we looked at. This one has a lot more text, a lot more words within it and the drawings and the illustrations are a lot more simple than the Minecraft one. So there's lots of different ways that comic books are drawn out, written out and laid out. And another really popular series is the Bad Guy series. And so the creator of the Bad Guys has created Cat on the Run. I'm seeing another theme going on here, if you guys haven't noticed either, is books with cats in them. People must just love cats. Kids must love cats. So this one is different again. This one has a lot of full page images on it and then goes into some of the smaller rectangle shapes and then again into the bigger full page image. And so this one has almost no text, no words on it, just relying on the images to tell the story. And so it's really nice to see with comic books and graphic novels, there's no specific set way to do it. It's basically just a story being told through images more than words. And regardless of whether there's one image per page or it's broken up into those little boxes, it doesn't really matter. There's no rules on how this should be formatted. And one last one I just pulled up again, Katie the Cat Sitter another cat book, People Who Love Cats. And let's see how this one has been laid out. So this one's got triangle shapes instead of rectangles and squares and all sorts of different shapes that's being used to tell the story. So just a little bit more visually appealing, a little bit different. And this one has a lot more text in terms of telling the story through speech. Comic books aren't something where there's a lot of descriptive text like you would get in a fiction book. The comics rely basically on the speech between the characters and the thoughts that come out of the character. So so really, really interesting. I'm not saying that you need to go out and write, create, illustrate a graphic novel or comic book, unless you want to, of course, but the actual graphic novels that we've just looked at are not the point of this video and it's not the niche that I'm talking about, but I just wanted to show you those books and show you the fact that they are getting popular again or they are trickling over into some of the more broader audiences and target markets and they are making a bit of a comeback and so what that's going to do is that it's going to get so many more people interested in comic books interested in graphic novels and it's going to make people want to create their own graphic novels and comic books and that's where we come in how can we help people make these kinds of books or start to take those first steps in creating a comic book for themselves. Whether they want to just do it as a hobby or as something else, we can help them by giving them a template to be able to just get out and start creating their own graphic novel and their own comic book. You may have heard of these books before and they are low content books. They're very simple. They're very easy to make and they are blank comic books. Let's take a look at some. So I've just done a search for blank comic book on Amazon and the first thing we want to do is just scroll down and have a look how many people have books in this niche and we can see here only 2,000 results or a little bit over 2,000 results. So not a huge amount of people publishing books in this space. And then the next thing we want to just take a look at are the best seller ranks because this is how we determine or it's a good way to help us determine whether this niche whether these books are in demand with Amazon's customers so a BSR is a bestseller rank and that's this number down here a number is given to every book in the Amazon marketplace and this number helps determine the popularity of a book with Amazon's customers so the lower this number the better you want this number to be as close to one as you can possibly get it and the closer it is to one the more it is selling so straight away we can see that there are some really really great selling blank comic books in this niche. The first few have very low bestseller ranks and then we have some more quite low range of bestseller ranks and as we scroll down we're still getting books that have bestseller ranks that are going to be selling books regularly and consistently. So ideally when you're looking in a niche you want to find on that first page of search results a bunch of books that have low bestseller ranks that show that these books are selling and this niche has definitely got a lot of books in it that are selling with Amazon's customers. Let's just take a look at the best selling blank comic book. There's a couple here with the Amazon bestseller badge. And this one is one of the ones with the bestseller badge published in 2019. And if we have a look at the inside of it, let's see if we can see how it's laid out. So it's just got plain, simple boxes with speech bubbles 
in different arrangements. And that's as simple as these books get. And it's basically just a template for people who want to start creating their own comic books. Now, another one that I've pulled up is actually the book in this niche that has the lowest bestseller rank at the moment. And so this is another one with a bestseller badge by Amazon and also currently sitting with the lowest bestseller rank in this niche. This bestselling book currently has a bestseller rank of 2,557. Now with this bestseller rank, we can estimate how many books could be selling. So all we need to do is pop on over to an Amazon sales calculator and we can estimate that this bestseller rank of 2,557 557 could be selling around 1,100 copies per month. One other thing that's interesting to look at is if we just scroll down to this plugin, this is a Helium 10 extension. It is free to install, but I like looking at this. It gives us the history of the sales and a history of the bestseller rank. And even though the bestseller ranks around 2,500, we can see historically right back to 2017, 2018, that the bestseller rank is usually lower. It's usually maybe an average or it's maybe more consistently around the 2000 mark. Now, based on the current bestseller rank of 2,557, we can use that to work out what royalty this book is getting, which then we can use to work out how much monthly income the book could be making. So if we hop on over to KDP's royalty calculator and we pop in the details of the book, we know that this book has a royalty of $1.35 for every book sold. So with 1,100 books being sold per month with a $1.35 royalty, that is just under $1,500 per month from that one blank comic book. So looking at the history with the Helium 10 extension, we can see that the bestseller rank is usually more consistently around 2000 or lower. And if that is the case, then they're probably selling a lot more books than 1,100 copies per month. And if that's the case, then the monthly income from this book is probably going to be more in the $2,500 per month range. But also on this history graph, the book always sells really well at Christmas time. You can see here just in the month before Christmas and in November, the bestseller rank drops right down into sort of 200s, 300s in the lead up to Christmas. Again, here the next year around Christmas, it drops right down again under 300, under 200 there. And year after year, it does the same thing around Christmas because this book is obviously something that gets picked up as a Christmas gift because that bestseller rank drops right down into the low hundreds right before Christmas. So the publisher is also going to be getting a really nice little boost of income right at the end of the year in that Christmas period. So how do you actually make these books for yourself? Well, if you have a graphic design program that you are good at using, well, you could just create the pages yourself within that program. And this would be especially good if you have an idea in your mind of a really specific way of how you want these pages laid out and exactly what sizes and shapes that you wanna include on each page. If you can't do this, then your second option would be to use Canva. Canva is free to use and you can use Canva for creating books that you are going to be selling for commercial purposes. Using Canva, you can use their elements and their shapes to arrange all the different sections on your pages. And they also have speech bubbles that you can use. I'll give you a really quick example of how you can create these pages in Canva. So all we wanna do is head into Canva, create a custom design, add in the size of the page and the book that you wanna create, and we can go from here. So what you wanna do is head on over to elements, and then we have shapes, and basically just select the square shape if that's what you're doing. You can also do those triangle shapes if you want. We want to put maybe three sort of boxes here. Control and copy. Pop the next one next to it. Control and copy. Pop the next one next to it. And then center them on the page. We want to add a border and change the color to white. And obviously you can play around with how thick your border is and that sort of thing. Okay, so first we have the first line of shapes. Now the next one, I'm just gonna put two larger boxes. And we wanna copy that, paste that, pop it over here. Okay. 
skin, pop our border, change it to white. And then the last box is going to be just a long rectangle. And that was done in just a couple of minutes. The next thing you might want to add in is some speech bubbles. So if we just do a quick search for speech bubbles, keep in mind if you are only using the free version of Canva, you cannot use anything with a crown. Anything with a crown is for pro version. And I personally think the pro version is worth it. If you want to use some of the pro elements, then you might have to upgrade. But if you're happy just using the free elements, you can do that too. And so we can just add in some speech bubbles here. If you want to have a box with the speech bubble, there's all different shapes and sizes that you can add in. And so you just go in and add whatever elements you want in terms of people being able to add text and that sort of thing. And so if we wanted to add another page, we just add the next page in there. I'm just going to copy this box and bring it down here. And this one's going to be sort of a larger box. And then a smaller box. And then it's going to be the same, but on the opposite side. I might do it like this. And then, oops, I've made them way too big. And again, then we would just go through add in where you want the different speech bubbles. And so that's that was just a very quick example, not something I put a lot of thought into. You ideally would want to sit down and sort of get an idea of what you want on each page and then just go through and add the different shapes and different speech bubbles and elements that you want to have on each page. And so if Canva is not an option for you either, a third option would be to purchase a pre-made template from somewhere like Creative Fabrica. The downside to doing this is that you don't have any control over the layout of of the sections of each page and you won't be able to change much about them. But if you just go to Creative Fabrica and search for blank comic book, you will see that there are lots of results for blank comic book pages, pretty cheap and some are even free. So you could even take a few of them and merge them together to get the pages and the book exactly as you want them. And that's probably going to be the best way to get a more unique interior as opposed to just using one of them, downloading it and popping that in your book where lots of other people could also be doing the same thing and creating books that look exactly like yours. So try to make it unique by perhaps merging a couple together to create something as different as you can possibly create. So what do you think about this niche? Maybe the next time you pass a bookstore, go in and take a look at the kids section and see how many graphic novels are available in your area. I think this is a really great niche with great strong demand that has always been popular, but is on a bit of a more upward trend with some of the more broader audience, some audiences, the more broader markets. And so I think we're going to see more people wanting to start drawing out their own comic books and their own graphic novels. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.